What is up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. And there's just something about the underdog, but you see him tank on muscles out. The underrated running back in the NFL. I call him the most underrated running back, but that's just me. What do I know? And I mean, the one and only Jeff Wilson Jr. What is up, big man? How you doing today? Oh, man, bless, man, bless. You know, I uh, got a little workout in today, got out in the sun. So now we out to have a little fun. The girl got a birthday, so we're going to have a little fun and then go back home. Well, that sounds like a day. I, I didn't realize you had such a busy day. I wouldn't have asked you to come on the podcast, but we're here. We're, we're, we're talking, and, and man, and yeah, shit. The NFL season is coming fast, man, and it, it, it's coming. What is it like? You guys have a reporting to practice soon. It's here already, man. I see it. It's already here, man. It's already here. And obviously, I got to ask the million dollars question. You know, obviously, your dad was a big inspiration for for the reason you played football. You got into the game of ball. And, and can you share your journey to becoming a professional football player from, you know, your early days in the sport to making it into the National Football League? Uh, yeah, man, it all it all started when I was five years old for me. Um, you know, um, our league, it was like you had to be seven or eight, but um, I was five and my dad was the coach and I, I was a little, I was a little heavy set kid. So my weight was, you know, like the same as everybody else's. So they was like, all right, it's cool. Let him play. He'll be fine. And then my dad okayed it. So they, uh, it started off at five years old and uh, it, it never looked back since, you know, ever since then, I felt like like I've been in tune with it and like it, it was what I'm meant to do and what I'm supposed to do. So um, ever since that, man, I just locked in and fell in love with it like 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 no other. You know, it's one of the um, biggest things in my life and I always have been. It's taking care of my life and, and it's continuing to do that. So, you know, uh, to give God all the glory for that. And, you know, uh, it, it, it hasn't been a, a, a easy journey as well either. Um, you know, I went to a, to a small high school, Elkhart, Texas. Uh, we played two a two a ball. Uh, I don't know if people know it like that, but yeah, we were two a. Uh, graduating class of sixty seven people, uh, but ended up making out. I had a couple offers coming out of there, man. Uh, but ended up going to the University of North Texas. Uh, then, like I said, it's kind of like a little rough patch. Went down, got to do the first two years, finding my way, and then about the end of that second year, junior senior year, it was like everything started back clicking for me. Everything started back clicking. Then uh, got invited to the combine. Uh, then the game, like two games after that, I break my foot right before I go. So uh, it's no back to another law. So I break my foot. Still get invited to the combine. Still go um, getting ready to do the field drills. They ended up flagging me because I still had like a like a partial little crack in, in my bones. So they didn't want to let me go. So they ended up flagging me. So I didn't get to do the drills. Didn't get to do none of that. So uh, that kind of put a little dinger on me. Uh, and then obviously, you know, going on to be undrafted with, with the 49ers, you know, that, that was a long, hard first two years, practice squad player trying to make a way, special teams doing everything I can to stay around. And then about that second or third year, man, everything started back, started back clicking again and people started realizing, you know, all right, this dude can, can play football. So, you know, we still trying to turn those heads. We still not done. We still got a lot to accomplish. And we still got people that we got to make believe with. So, you know, that's all we've been on. It's back to work, back to grind, and then getting ready for the season. Hell, yeah. And that sounds like an underdog, Jeff, right there. There's something about him. Right. And, and, you know, I think a lot of fantasy owners were, were very happy when you started balling out as a 49er. I certainly right. was. I, yeah. I, I, I want to say this because I actually drafted you in fantasy for what it matters. I didn't pick you up when yeah. you started doing well. So yeah, um, I'm just going to put gut, that my out there. My gut. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, as man. a running back, what do you consider to be your strengths on the field? Obviously, you know, to me, when I see you're playing, it's that burst of energy. But what do you think your strength is and how do you use these to your advantage? Uh, my strength is I feel like I'm not a one dimensional running back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you have you have some guys that are that are very superb at running the ball. Then you have other guys that are very superb at catching the ball. And then you have some guys that are real, real good at blocking. And with me, I feel like I have all three of those tangibles that that, that make me a complete back and, and hard to ignore. 
You know what I mean? Uh, so if you got one player that can do one thing, that's easy to replace him. But when you got a guy that can do everything on top of being valuable anywhere else you need him, you know, that's kind of hard to overlook and overcome. So to me, how I wanted to do it, I want to always keep my game versatile and always try to be the best at every category, whether it's catching the ball, running the ball, or blocking. You know, and this even being a, a student and a coach of the game. So that's that's what it boiled down to, and, and, and that's what that's pretty much what it was. And I think an all-purpose back is what I will call you, sir. And obviously, there are some one-dimensional runners. Nothing wrong with that because they're they, they're elite in those one dimensions that they they can fill. And you got the third down backs who can just come in and get that first for you. But all down backs are rare, man. But when you can be an all down back, you are you are a jack of all trades. Now I do have to ask, what are some of your most memorable you know games you've had so far in your career, uh, Jeff? Uh, I would say the two to just ring off my head. And, and the stick with me is, for one, the Arizona game uh, when I played yeah. with the 49ers game, the game winner. That was that was like a, a monumental step in my career because, like, obviously, if you know, if you watch the game and if you know kind of my journey, I didn't get an offensive snap the whole entire game until it was like 30 seconds left in the game. That was the only snap I had. And then that turned out to be a game when it touched down. So that was like that was like a thriller for me. That's, that's one that I – that I remember forever. That's one that I always tell my kids. That's one that I always show my son. When I pull a clip of, hey, y'all remember this? I'll tell them the background, the story of it. That one, that one really stuck to me. That one really stuck to me. And the other one was when I first got to Miami and we went to play in Chicago. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like it was just a, a big thriller game, but it was like it was like my acceptance in into them. You know what I'm saying? After that game, so. After that, being the players in the locker room, getting the game ball, I felt like that game was a non-monumental uh, game for me for the, for to be out here in Miami. So I feel like those two games are really the ones that, that show, like, hey, he's here. You know what I mean? Like, he can play. So that's what I believe in. And those two games will, will, will always stick to me. Damn right. And we just had Brian Erlacher on the podcast, and he must be kicking his legs into the ground because what you, did his, what you did to his damn bears was not okay, man. I mean, you had a game and a half, and I actually rewatched that game against the Bears, and, and you and Raheem just balled out. Both of you guys had such a one two punch on that explosive offense already. Now, you know, looking ahead, what are your aspirations and goals? for both your football career and then even life beyond the NFL. I mean, what do you see next for Jeff Wilson Jr., sir? Oh, the next step is definitely, like I said, one of those things. I feel like people know I can play, but they don't really, like, truly or, or solely believe and know that I'm one of the one of the best backs in the league. And, you know, that's, that's, that's you no know, so their problem. That's just things that I have to do to help solidify and show them that, Man, I'm here to stay. I'm, I'm not going nowhere. And, and as long as my body let me turn, I'm going to turn. And, and that's how I've seen it. Football's always been my love. Football's always been my passion. And it's always been number one in my life. Uh, and until I stop playing, that's what it will continue to be. And you know, um, it, it's the sour, sweet, bittersweet of it because, you know, you also have a life, that a regular life that you have to live. You have family. You have kids. But, you know, right now, uh, business is business, and this is an opportunity that comes one in a lifetime. Everybody don't get it. So I just got all my chips in, man, and I just want to be be the greatest player I can be and really show these people that I can play because, like, being – being I don't want to even say degraded, but being overlooked is, is not, it's not a good feeling. Or, or being being a player, or he's just – it's, it's not a good feeling, especially when you believe a certain way yourself. So it's not only necessarily just them. It's – it's for the whole world. That's this year is dedicated for the whole world. Um, I just buried my uh, my grandmother, so this season is this season is for her for sure. So it's a lot of a lot of passion behind it, a lot of grit and, and, and a lot of a lot of thing and a lot of stakes on the table. So I'm looking forward to this year, and I really can't wait. And after man, I just want to be I want to be the businessman, man. You know, yeah. show my son get stuff in him, put stuff in his name. That way, when he get older, he'll have business. And if he didn't want to play football, he don't have to play football. So that's my other uh, that's my other job outside of football. So that's my like that's my second occupation. You know what I mean? So that's all I wear, but that's all I think about because I want him to be a successful man without having to go through the things I had to go through in life. 
and and I hear every word you said and what what we go through makes us and I'm so sorry about your grandma's loss and obviously yeah. she's watching over you and I know this season you're going to ball out for her and yeah. make her proud above and that is what you do and obviously you're on such an explosive team now and obviously yeah. you now have and I do have to ask what do you think about Jalen Ramsey being the highest rated cornerback in Madden 23? And, and what are the thoughts of Jalen Ramsey become, joining your already stacked team? Oh man, that's, that, that's a no brainer. You know, um, Jalen has been one of the top cornerbacks since he's been in the league. You know what I mean? And the type of guy he is, you know, for him to, to respond to me when we first got to have our conversation, you know, most guys when he at a certain level and they reach a certain peak of their career, you know, you can kind of sense some people change, but like with him, you can tell he's a down to earth dude, and, and that's the reason he he believes in the, in the high power, and, and that's the reason why he's in the position he's in. Uh, like I said, he's been the top guy since he came out of college, so and, and nothing has changed. So I feel like that was that was right for the dude. You know, I'm I'm glad to have him a part of the Dolphins now. I played against him uh, a few times. You know, I've seen the other conference when he was with the Rams. So to be on the same team, I love the way he play. I love the way he plays the game. I love the way he, he attacks the game. And um, and I feel like that's going to be pivotal for our defense. Yeah, and I mean, adding to that defense, obviously, is just going to be insane. And now, as a running back, you know, you are in one of the most physically demanding positions in, well, let's just say it, all of sports. So, Jeff, how do you prioritize, you know, injury prevention and, and maintain your overall well-being during the season, sir? Man, you 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 have to you have to invest. That's 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 that'll be the biggest thing I, I would say. You know what I mean? Um, when I came in the league, you know, I was I was fortunate. I was able to be roommate with two guys that that, that helped me out because obviously, like you know, my journey wasn't like everybody else's. Just playing for me, I ain't got no I ain't got no shame in it. You know what I mean? But but uh, Jared McKinnon and Matt Burita, those guys really took me in and, and, and showed me the ropes. I'm talking about all the way from going to get an MRI after season just to make sure your body's on point, just the whole nine, you know what I mean? So the the IVs, the massages, acupuncture, cupping, scraping, seeing all these people come in to, to Jet McKinnon's house when I'm staring there and seeing his production. You know, obviously he just got the contract at the time. So, you know, I'm watching him like a hawk. So seeing all those things and being around people that showed me the right way, you know what I mean? That's what helped me keep my body right and keep it together this whole time. And if you don't put no money in it, it ain't going to last long, bottom line. Darn right. And, you know, ending this podcast, you are not only a hero to many. You changed the way the game's been played. And I think you need a pat on the back. And while you have so much to prove, what you've done for the game and what you've done for your fans and, you know, obviously the city of Miami and obviously San Francisco – Bro, you just balled out, man, and you are a absolute class act and a hard worker, and I love to see what you're going to do this season with even more of a reason to just ball out and prove people wrong. But, you know, final question, you've kind of seen it all. You really have seen it all in both life and, and the game of football. What is your biggest tip for someone who is looking to make it to the big leagues like you once were dreaming of, sir? Man. Put your head down, focus on yourself, and do everything in your power to leave no doubt at the end of the day. If it's if it's any kind of doubt, you didn't do enough. Or if it's any kind of thing that you feel like you didn't work enough, you didn't do enough. So all you have to do is put all your chips in, man. Put your head down. Don't worry about the next man's journey because it might be a friend or somebody you know that's in the same position that's getting accolades or getting all this attention and getting the first rounds, but that's not your race. So whatever you have to do in the journey, you have to take, prepare yourself to take that journey because everybody's journey is different and yours might be harder than the next man. So your mentality, your heart, and your mind, everything has to be in a different state of mind. So that's what I would give to them, man. Keep your head down, man, and never let nobody tell you you can't. Dang right. And I do have one final question. What are the Dolphins going to do this year, sir? Uh, let's just say it's spooky season. <laughs> That's all I'm going to give you. That's all oh, I'm going to give you, baby. Spooky it's not season. Halloween yet, but I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it now. Yes, yeah, before we go, the floor is yours. Where can we find your, your Instagram, man? Anything you're working on, um, the floor is yours, sir. 
Oh uh, yeah, my Instagram uh, is just my name, Jeffrey Wilson Jr. Um, we just got done having some football camps uh, here recently um, that we're doing annually now. Uh, we've been having them free too. I, I don't want to charge anybody like that because I feel like that's that's a part of the game that I could give back. So uh, we, me and my me and my friend Samaje Dream Big Athletics. Uh, he's uh, another friend page of mine. It's a good page that you can go follow and look up for a lot of stuff dealing with me as well because he's a close friend and, and a brother of mine that follows me be behind me. So uh, to look up his page and follow that, that'll be another good step as well. And uh, yeah, next year, do the same thing. Have the caps and keep this thing rolling, man. And first person to follow Jeff on Instagram, I will send you a Jeff Wilson Jr. Miami Dolphins jersey. I mean, that is a steal right there. And you get to wrap Wilson Jr. on your back. And you'll see a lot of touchdowns of Wilson Jr. on the TV screen. You guys heard me. Hey, there is something about the underdog. Jeff, thank you so much for taking your time, man, to come on the podcast. Such a class act. And what you're doing for the community as well is is even bigger than the game. So thank you for, for, for just being such a class act, man. And guys, don't forget to check out Jeff's info his link will be in the bio of this youtube you guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe you know the deal until next time let's just say it two underdogs out